Hey, Cracked Rider Performer, at Katie Stoll here. I know that I may not seem a day over age 18 to 25, but the truth is, I'm getting up there. As I enter what can only be described as my golden years, I find myself taking stock of things, paying better attention to what I put in my body. And this may only come as a surprise to me, but it turns out that a lot of the healthy things we're being told to do is total bullshit. And like, I probably only have, what, 50 to 60 years left, if I'm lucky? Who has time to waste on bull So if you are like me, a mere mortal with only one body who annually finds themselves a year closer to death, this one's for you. Ever since I was small and cute, I have been told that I need to floss every day in order to prevent gum disease, which has been difficult because I f hate flossing. Honestly, I think it's because my mouth is too small. I feel like I'm diving into the sun. But according to a recent article published by the AP, that is all, you guessed it, bullshit. The AP looked at data compiled over the last decade and found that the evidence for flossing is weak, very unreliable, of very low quality, and carries a moderate to large potential for bias. I know, I know, it seems crazy, right? It feels like the benefits of floss go without saying. Flossing, which originated in the early 1800s, removes plaque. And since plaque leads to tooth decay and gum disease, it's always been assumed flossing must help prevent tooth decay and gum disease. But science has like gotten way better since then, and modern studies just do not seem to support that hypothesis. Look, I really Realize you're probably taking your hat off and 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 throwing it at the computer screen right about now, but you should actually hold on to your hats. Because the federal government has even removed flossing from their list of recommended guidelines and admitted to the AP that the effectiveness of flossing had never been adequately researched as required. Now, it's important to state that the ADA stands by their position, but it is doubly important to further state that the studies they point to in favor of flossing are largely funded by the dental industry. I mean, floss is obviously a good tool for getting all the gross little bits out of your mouth. I'm not about to banish floss from my life completely. That'd be crazy. But for those of you who have spent your lives secretly struggling with floss-related guilt, well, pressure's off, I guess. Another widely held belief is that drinking cranberry juice will help treat UTIs. That's because cranberries contain an ingredient called pro anth pro Packs. They are just, they're called packs. Packs can keep bacteria from binding to the urinary tract, but it turns out that they aren't actually present in commercial cranberry juice. And the recent studies claiming that cranberry juice does indeed help treat UTIs has been paid for by, get this, Big Cran. Even the Cochrane Library, the most comprehensive database for interpreting medical research, states that cranberry juice does not appear to have a significant benefit in preventing UTIs and may be unacceptable to consume in the long term. As see, the other problem with cranberry juice is that it is indeed juice, aka pure sugar, or as our very own Carmen Angelica once put it, big old glass of death. And before you say, um, sure, but can't you just like take a cranberry capsule instead? Let me just say not so fast, because the Cochrane Library further states that cranberry products were also ineffective, possibly due to lack of potency of the active ingredient. Basically, it's bull You are wasting your time, your money, and your calories. If you've got a UTI, stop listening to ocean spray and just go see your doctor. Sometimes here at Cracked, we find ourselves doing night shoots. As you can imagine, staying up all night can really mess with your sleep, and until recently, I would sometimes use melatonin to help. The melatonin hormone is produced in the presence of darkness and regulates our circadian rhythms. It has a myriad of beneficial functions in our bodies and is generally accepted as a safe, natural way to help promote better sleep. Except that very little scientific research has actually been done on the safety or effectiveness of melatonin supplements as a treatment for actual insomnia. In this interview with the Huffington Post, sleep researcher Michael Gradner even states, any person in the sleep world will tell you the same thing. Melatonin is not harmless, is vastly overused, and should not be used as a sleep aid to treat insomnia. See, melatonin's role is to signal to the body that it is nighttime, meaning it, it can be beneficial in knocking you out, but it does nothing to improve the quality of your rest, nor does it treat the cause of your insomnia. And have you heard how many times I've referred to melatonin as a hormone? Well, hey, that's because it's a hormone. But for some reason, OTC melatonin pills are classified as a dietary supplement, meaning it isn't regulated by the FDA and most supplements contain 10 times the recommended dosage. Too much melatonin can cause grogginess, depression, nausea, and headaches. <laughs> and like, if you're gonna feel like when you wake up, you may as well do shots before bed.
Now, I'm not saying, hey guys, melatonin's bad. I'm saying, hey guys, melatonin is a hormone that should be administered under the supervision of a physician, but only for things like jet lag. And also, if you have insomnia, you probably shouldn't take it anyway because you aren't addressing the actual problem, okay? Well, there are lots of other examples that we could talk about. Taking vitamin C when you have a cold, for example, that's a, another bullshit. Uh, I don't know, maybe just look it up. Woo. Honestly, ever since I've become such a very old woman, I tire super easily. It's weird. Although I did actually hear that B12 is supposed to really increase your energy. I'm thinking about maybe heading on over to Whole Foods after this, maybe picking some up. Maybe even a little acai too, huh? <laughs> I don't know. Who the f knows? Life is fun. Hmm. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. Seems like you like watching stuff. If that's the case, please come to UCB Sunset Theater and see me, Jack O'Brien, and my not brother, Daniel O'Brien, uh, and other cracked people, presumably, along with Georgia Hartstark and Karen Kilgariff, the hosts of the My Favorite Murder podcast, as well as guests on one of our most popular episodes of the Crack Podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about murder. We're going to be talking about mayhem. We're going to be talking serial killers. We're going to be talking urban legends that happen to be true. We're going to, uh, those are mostly synonyms. I've just heard that listing things is uh, good for punctuating your sales pitch. Uh, anyways, uh, it is January 14th, 7 p.m. Be there or be murdered. I can't say that, can I?